dropper posts are without a doubt one of the coolest things on any modern mountain bike. But certain designs can be susceptible to becoming a little bit sticky or a little bit slow in the way that they rebound if you don't maintain them correctly. So today we're going to be looking at those and we're going to show you two methods to make sure yours is running nice and smoothly. Okay, so there's three major styles of posts on the market. The one we're looking at today is the cartridge-based offering, because they're the ones that can get a little bit sticky in use, so you need to fix that and it's super easy to do, but you do need to identify which one is which. Now, on a cartridge-based post, it won't have a valve at the top. On a hydraulic post, you will see a valve at the top there, so that is the way to identify if yours is hydraulic or if it's a cartridge design. Now, a little bit about the the designs on the market and how they work. So you get fully hydraulic, semi-hydraulic, and cartridge. Now, the fully and semi-hydraulic options both essentially have the same system on the inside of the post. They have air, they have a piston, and they have oil. When you push the lever down, the piston pushes the oil and displaces it into a different chamber. When you push it again, basically the, the port unlocks and the air enables the oil to basically return into the original chamber and the post extends. Very cool system. Now, as well as basic routine maintenance and bleeding and things like that, the only things that tend to go wrong is air can get on the wrong side of the IFP, which makes them a little bit bouncy at the top of the stroke there. Now, the difference between semi and fully hydraulic posts is the way they're operated, like the actual lever. So the only fully hydraulic one is the RockShox Reverb, which has a hydraulic remote control. All semi-hydraulic ones have the hydraulic post and they have a cable operated lever, which uses the same inner cable as you would do on your rear derailleur. So nice and easy to tailor that. And there's lots of options of levers available on the market. Now, various options in the semi-hydraulic tend to be uh, Fox transfer post, specialized command post, the bike yoke offering, the KS Lev, like, etc. There's a lot of different ones available on the market. And then there's the cartridge based designs. Now the cartridge ones, essentially they're still hydraulic, except the hydraulic bit is housed inside a cartridge on the inside of the post. The rest is just essentially two tubes that slide within each other and they have a key system, which I will show you shortly. Now the hydraulic cartridge is a really cool little thing and it looks a little bit like the gas strut that you have on your car boot, keeping the lid open when you open a boot. Now, because it's a hydraulic design, nothing really ever goes wrong with them. If they fail, you replace that hydraulic system itself, just that one part and you're back in business. But really what tends to happen is they get a bit slow in use and it's not the cartridge. It always is the post where they've not been maintained and they get gunked up. So let's have a little fix, shall we? Okay, so I'm gonna show you two fixes for this. One is the quick one, which I'm sure a lot of you will appreciate. And the other one is a much better fix. So the quick one you can do in between rides. Think of it as a bit more of an interim service. Now it's not an alternative, but it will definitely make your post feel much smoother. So first up, you want to get this seal head undone. You might need a tool for this, such as this. This is a strap wrench. Now this is a great thing for holding this and gripping on it. It can be quite slippy because of oil and things. Uh, think of it as a, uh, it's a workshop spec version of what grannies use to open tins when their little delicate hands can't grip on them. Same principle, basically. If you haven't got one, get one. They're absolutely brilliant. Now just undo this seal head by hand now, quite a few threads on it, and then slide it up and out of harm's way. Now this is a brand new post, so it's obviously clean, but your post might be really filthy here. Now just a note, if it's got any scoring on this upper tube, you might need to replace it. So if it has, get some advice from your local shop. But in this case, it looks fine. Now you could just clean this, but what you want is to actually remove the bushing from here. So with the seal head up and out of the way, actuate your post a few times until you notice the bushing pop out of the way. There you go, so and make sure it's fully extended. Now get some shop towel or kitchen roll or whatever your, your fancy is and give it a good clean around here. Now you're gonna need some suspension grease and some suspension oil for this. Now. There's various sprays on the market, like silicon sprays and things. Now, they're good to put on the top of the post afterwards for keeping this surface clean. You don't want to use them at this stage, you want an actual oil in here. So, a suspension grease over a regular grease is a necessity because it's very thin and it stays in place. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of SRAM butter in here, just a small amount, just on the underside of where the bushing goes. You don't want to put too much and gunk it all up. Now that bushing can go nicely back in place. 
and slide into the poster. And then next, slide this down and you want to put a bit of suspension oil on this upper leg here. Now, a small amount is necessary and then you're going to put this down, compress it a few times, pull it back up again because sometimes it draws out any gunk that's on the underneath, clean it, put it back down again and then it's going to work really smoothly. Now it's up to you what suspension based oil you use but definitely use an oil over a spray because it does work better and it, as you can see it really stays in place on here as well so it stays where I want it to underneath the seal. That is the key to get it under the seal. It's a rubber seal, it creates friction, yeah? Now, if you haven't got any suspension oil, you can get away with using wet chain loop. I wouldn't recommend using anything that's got ceramic or anything like that. Just the bare minimum wet chain loop can actually do this quite well, but you won't be a dedicated suspension oil for this purpose. Now, I'm just gonna turn this down, pump it a few times. So some of that oil has gone on the inside there. Just remove this, give it another clean, another little bit of oil, and put it back down and tighten it. That's as simple as that. So just to make sure that anything drawn out is wiped away. Bit more oil on there. Screw down the seal head. Only needs to be hand tight. A pair of rubber gloves like these will give you a good enough grip on there, you don't need to crank it up. And there we go. Good for action, and it's gonna be much smoother and faster if it was a bit of a slow post to start with. Job done. Now time for option two. Now this is the full strip down. So step with me over to the workbench. Okay, so sat at my workbench here and I have a Crank Brothers post in front of me, so it's a cartridge design. This one looks like it's been chewed up by a shark or something horrible. It's a right old state. It is an older post. You can tell because it doesn't have the black seal head on there, but this one does work. Uh, I've already checked it, but it is a bit slow. So this is prime to sort out. So no matter what brand you have, the fundamentals are the same for taking them apart. I also have a Brand X one here, which is the same as SDG, um, Trans X, Shimano Pro, all of those ones. So I'll take this one apart as well, just to show you the difference. But Fundamentally, they're the same. So post off the bike first, remove your seat clamp off the top, that's using those two five mil bolts. It might be six on yours, but it's usually five mil. Then you wanna undo the cable clamp mechanism on the bottom. Now on this older Crank Brothers one, you literally just rotate or counter rotate this. And you pull out the plastic plug, the, sp the sprung bit on the middle. Make sure you don't lose any, any parts there. And then next up, remove that seal head and now the tougher bit you might find that you need a strap wrench for this or if you need to clamp the post don't put it in a vise or anything like that unless you've got very soft jaws the best bet is to put it in the bike work stand it's designed for clamping tubes without damaging them so that's a good little tip there so basically clamp it and then you'll need your adjustable to undo it on the bottom there we go so undo this from the bottom of the post and this is attached directly to the cartridge now, before we take the cartridge out, this is what I want to show you. This is where the slow bit is. So, note that the seal head is moved away from the post. If I'm to just slide this up and down, it feels a little bit sticky. It's not too bad. But if, I'm, if I move it with the seal head, it feels really quite sticky. So it just shows you how much friction can be had in the system if it's not clean. But the point is, I mean, there is actually friction there. And you can see, if you look close, how gunked up that is. So to release it from the system, in this case, it's two and a half mil Allen key on the top. Nice and simple. And then it should just slide straight out. Now remember I said it looks a little bit like those gas struts that you get on, on your car? Same thing, so this one says Wintec suspension, do not open, puncture or burn, uh, do not loosen parts. High pressure gas inside. So if this fails, if you have one of these designs, you can simply replace this part. It's a really, really cool idea, which means there's not a whole lot going on. So when you slide this open, oh yeah, that's why it's running so badly, because of that gunk that gets in there. So if you're to do the number one option, which I showed you earlier, just putting a bit of oil down the top, eventually it's all gonna gunk up like this. So this is why you should be pulling it apart to clean it. Now the inside here isn't looking too bad, but it will need a good clean. 
That is your bush, you want to remove that and ideally clean the seals. Now depending on the style of your particular post, you need to get these keys out. So these keys, they're brass sometimes, depending on which brand you have. Sometimes you have two, sometimes you have three. Now they slide in channels on the inside of the post to stop it rotating. So these can actually be removed. Now I should be able to just prise these ones off, nice and delicately, there we go. And the other side should come off just as easily as a little, little nook there to lift them out. He says, there we go. And then the bushing should slide off, off the bottom there. And there's one more bushing on the actual base of the post there. Take care not to scratch or scuff anything. Treat it like you would with a suspension unit. Because that's essentially what it is. And then you're free to slide the main seal head off. Now what do you think you're gonna do? Yep, clean it all. And you're gonna put some nice quality suspension grease, thinnest possible. I'm using SRAM butter in this case, but uh, you may have a different preference. Clean up that seal as best as you can because that is pretty gunky under there. Put a fresh bit of grease on the underneath, replace it all, and then you're gonna do the suspension lube at the very last part of the process before assembling it back together. Reverse process. Okay, time to put it all back together with a good amount of suspension grease on there. So just take care as you're putting the little keys back in place. Remember things like the seal unit has got to go on first because you've got to put the keys on and the bushes in place afterwards. So any grease you're gonna put in the seal, you wanna do this now before it goes on because once it's on, you can't put anything else inside this. And some of this will purge back out again afterwards, but essentially it's just to make sure that, that is nice and smooth. Now this part can go straight on to the actual post now. There we go. Slide it on nicely. Now you might want to just wipe off any excess grease on here just to make your job a bit easier just for doing the rest of it. And now it's the case of getting those keys back in place and getting the bushings on and making sure everything it's got a nice coating of grease on it. So we're gonna do the bushings and the keys now. Take care that you put them in on the correct orientation. So there's a little indent on these ones. Whatever brand it is you have will have something similar. So just pay attention to that. Make sure it's nice and smooth as it goes in. Shouldn't be any effort to get these in. They should just pop into place. Okay, next thing is getting that main bush in place. Slide that over. Get this smaller bottom one, slide that in. And you've basically prepared this surface now. So, a bit of suspension grease it on here, and then it can slide into this outer unit that you've already cleaned. Now I like to just run a bit more suspension grease, just a small amount around the inside of there. A tiny bit on the actual keys and on this surface. A little bit around that bottom bushing, and then I'm not gonna do the top one just yet. I'll do that afterwards. Now this, take care to orientate it correctly to make sure that the keys line up with the grooves on the inside of the post, like so. That's what stops it rotating. And then you're good to, tie a bit more grease on here just to hold it in place. And I'm gonna put a bit of suspension lube behind it, just on, this surface here, slide that in, give the upper bit of the leg here a bit of a clean, a bit more suspension lube on here, and close that seal down behind it. Now of course when you operate this afterwards you'll find it will purge out some grease onto that stanchion tube. Nothing wrong with that. Just give it a wipe because you don't want to be attracting any, any muck to it. Now you just slide the cartridge back on the inside there. Thread it in at the bottom end. Making sure you tighten up the bottom as appropriate. You then just reinstall that two and a half mil bolt into the top there. It just secures that cartridge on the inside. 
then you're free to put back the remaining parts. Hold the, ca the cable into the bottom of the post. Of course, you'd actually install the cable at this point, but that's irrelevant for now. Uh, that's about all there is to it. It's really quite simple. You just got to take your time, be methodical. Now you don't even have to go as far as removing all this stuff. Like I said, you can do option one, but just be aware that the more you do this, eventually you're going to need to take the, the actual post apart in order to clean the gunk that does accumulate in there. And I promise you, your post will feel nice and slick afterwards. Now, if you want to see, in fact, I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to quickly pull this Brand X post apart. I'm just going to turn the camera to my eye point of view, Dodd's eye view, just so you can see it, just see the difference. But essentially, it's the same thing. I'm quickly going to talk you through this, and then we're going to wrap things up. Hold on a second. Okay, so I've got a Brand X post here. Something I forgot to say is, essentially, the main difference when you're taking these apart compared to the Crank Brothers one. Crank Brothers one has a 2.5mm Allen key to hold the cartridge in place. The Brand X, or whatever brand you might have, could have a 10mm uh, 10 mil nut on the top. If that's the case, you've got to make sure that everything is tight in order to undo it because the cartridge can spin around on the inside. But other than that, it's fairly simple. So let's crack on with it. I'm just going to uh, adjust my zoom so you can see this a bit better. Okay, so oh, that was my glove, honest. All right, so 10 mil out the top. There we go. Remove the seal, head. <laughs> I promise you that's my glove making that noise. I didn't have beans for lunch. There we go. So you can already see the top of the bushing on there. So in fact, have I uh, released all of that out? Yeah, there we go. So there comes that bushing. In fact, let's... Uh, Compress it slightly first. Now if I do this, the bushing should come out. There we go. So there's the upper part. In fact, do I even need to undo this as well? Probably do, don't I? No, there's no pressure on this, is because the seal head was undone. As in no tension, but same thing. So there you go. You have another cartridge, lower part, the upper part. But note on this one, you have three keys instead of two, like you do on the Crank Brothers one, and they're smaller. So Crank Brothers has, they're about, well, twice the length, but it's two of them. This one has three shorter ones, but the exact same configuration, basically. So once you've done one, you really have done them all. So I emphasize that is Brand X, SDG, Giant Contact, TransX, Shimano Pro. They all work just like this, so you should be able to get your post feeling nice and fast by just making sure that this area is fully clean, okay? Okay, so one service Crank Brothers post, nice and easy, like I explained to you. And again, emphasizing the point, you've just seen me take apart the Brand X one, same concept. Got the old gas strut that sits on the inside. You have the keys that stop it rotating. In this case, three keys instead of Crank Brothers that has two, but this is the area you need to pay attention to. And that's pretty much it. Keep it nice and clean. The same with that seal head. Make sure that is as clean and as lubricated as possible without it gunking up. And I promise you, your seat post will work nice and freely, but you do have to do it from time to time. Uh, hopefully, we can answer some more questions for you and show you how to look after things here at GMBN Tech. Got any suggestions? Let us know in those comments. Use the hashtag AskGMBNTech if you've got a direct question or if you want us to make a video. Just get a type in in those comments and I might see you down there. Uh, see you in the next video. Ta-ra!